The first thing I did was subject myself to public humiliation. You see, I'd always wanted to be a writer. As long as I could remember, I'd wanted to write fiction, I'd wanted to write a great book, and no matter how hard I tried, I just kept writing bad fiction. I also read all the books. I read Save the Cat, I read Story, I read The Snowflake Method, all these things about story structure and all this. And then I came across the story grid. I read it. I loved it. I ended up reaching out to the author, Sean Coyne, to see if we could talk for a little bit. He's this editor with over 30 years of experience, and he's well known in the industry as a fantastic editor. So I just asked for a few minutes on the phone with him to get his feedback, and he agreed to do it. Now, on that call, I pitched him on the idea of doing a podcast together where each week we would just record an hour of me asking all my idiot beginner questions and then he would answer them. For the first few weeks, we just went over the basic tenets of story grid and how stories are structured. But then I wrote a scene and turned it into him. And we were going to record the next podcast episode. And he asked me before we started recording, like, how do you want to do this? I said, oh, just pretend you're my editor and we're doing a call and you're going to give me feedback on my writing. And he was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. Well, what I didn't know was that he was going to tear my writing to shreds. In fact, later when he just sent me the notes he was going over with me, they were three times as long as my actual scene. There was one point where I just pushed back and just put my hand in my face because I was thinking the whole time, oh my gosh, everybody that listens to the podcast is going to hear this. And this is how it went on year after year after year. For most episodes of the podcast, I would send him some of my writing and he would spend the entire hour ripping it apart, telling me what I did wrong and how I need to fix it. So this first crazy step I took to becoming a great writer was to submit myself to public humiliation, where week after week after week, my scene got torn to shreds in front of thousands and thousands of listeners. But at the same time, I was getting expert advice week after week after week. That was worth way more than I could possibly pay for it. So what's that second crazy thing I did to become a great writer? Well, I realized pretty quickly that churning out words day after day after day wasn't getting me any closer to my goal. So yes, I was hitting my 500 words a day, 1,000 words a day goal. But then when I would look back, I realized all I was doing was making the same mistakes over and over. I wasn't actually getting any better. So instead of worrying about hitting any kind of daily word count, I decided to focus on skill acquisition. I wanted to get better at individual writing skills because that's what would actually get me to the point where I could write something great. So instead of just sitting down and churning out more words, I had a goal in mind. So I would decide this week I'm going to practice writing great dialogue and I would pull up great scenes from master workbooks and look at how they create a dialogue. Then I would try to write my scene with great dialogue and then I would get feedback on that to see if I was getting any better. So I didn't really care how many words I was writing each day. I cared if I was getting better at a particular skill. So the second crazy thing I did to become a great writer is stop writing to some arbitrary word count that I came up with or somebody else told me I should be writing to. And instead, I focused on actually getting better at writing. The third crazy thing I did is go against this advice that great writers read a lot. Because you know what? I know a lot of people that read a whole lot, a whole lot more than me, and they're not great writers. So instead of just reading and reading and reading, I decided to stop and study great stories, movies, and books. I started digging in and looking at how the great writers constructed everything from a great sentence all the way up to a great story. This is where I really dug into the story grid analysis tools. Sean has created so many great tools on how to study and analyze a story. So I would look at the genre, the obligatory moments, the conventions, the four-act structure. I would do the story grid spreadsheet and look at each individual scene and how they were moving the story forward. I would study the dialogue. I would study all these things, and I still do it to this day. So instead of just reading and reading and reading, I would stop and focus and actually learn from a single masterwork for a long period of time. And I saw how doing this greatly leveled up my understanding of how stories are told and it made me a better writer. So instead of just reading and reading and reading, I focused on studying and analyzing great masterworks. At this point, I have to tell you, if there was one thing that I could go back and redo on my journey to becoming a great writer, it would be to stop 
trying to write full manuscripts. Somehow we think as writers that we can just sit down and churn out an entire manuscript. And what happened to me for year after year after year is I would sit down, I would start writing, I'd get halfway done, I'd realize the book wasn't working, I'd throw it out, I'd have some new idea, better idea, I'd plot it a little bit more, and I'd try again. And even if I got to the end, it didn't work. I would go back and read it and realize the writing was not good. And so I wasted year after year after year just churning out manuscripts. And so the fourth crazy thing I did to become a great writer is stop trying to write books. Instead, I focused on just writing one great scene. If I could write one great scene and I could start doing that consistently, then maybe in the future, I could write a great book. And so I just stopped for two full years writing anything longer than a single scene and I would just work on one scene until it was good enough before I would move on and work on another scene. So I stopped working on any books, anything longer than a single scene for two full years just so I could develop the skills that I needed to become a great writer. Now, of everything that I did, the fifth thing is the craziest. So a lot of times people will ask you if you're working on a book, hey, when is your book going to be done? When are you going to get it done? And when people ask me, I say, when Sean says it's good enough. Whenever I tell other writers this, this is really tough for them to take. The idea that I have turned over the reins to somebody else to let me know when my writing's good enough to put it out in the world. And I will literally keep working and working and working until Sean says that my writing is good enough. But this is really important because our egos are so wrapped up in our writing and it can come from both directions. On one hand, I've been working on this so long, I'm so sick of it, it's good enough, let's just put it out into the world. It can also come from the other direction where I just want to keep churning on it and making it a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And so I just keep reading it and reading it and reading it, trying to make it a little bit better and really just putting off putting it out into the world. And so I have Sean, who's my editor, who I trust to give me objective feedback that has a deep understanding of story to read my drafts and tell me when it's good enough. If you've been following the podcast at all, you know this is how we work because in the past, I've had to write 11, 12, 13 drafts of a single scene before Sean says that it's good enough to move on to a new project. But what I found in that is one, I keep getting better and better and better. And it allows me to trust fully that when he says it's good enough, it's good enough and I can let it go. It's the same thing for my current book. My book's coming out this year. We're in the very final stages of editing of it. And when I turned the draft of it into Sean a few months ago, he read it and said, not only is it the best thing I've ever written, it has the potential to turn into something great. And because I've turned my autonomy over to Sean, I can relax, keep working until he says it's done. And when it is done, put it out into the world and trust that it's as great as it possibly could be. Now, through this long and intense process of becoming a great writer, something crazy happened. I actually became a pretty good editor too, and I've started acting in that role as editor for more and more writers. I'm helping them develop their idea into a full working story. I'm helping them analyze individual scenes. I'm helping them analyze entire manuscripts, and I'm giving feedback on them. And one is, I know how all this works because I've become a great writer, but every time I look at somebody else's writing and analyze it, I become better as a writer too. So that's the sixth crazy thing I did to become a great writer. I became a great editor too. So that's the six crazy things I did to become a great writer. And some of those may work for you. Some of them may not work for you. But I want to give you a bonus overarching rule that you should apply to your quest to become a great writer. Everything I said in this video, everything I teach falls under this overarching rule. Are you ready? I'm going to give it to you. Everything dies on the altar of becoming a great writer. My ego, my reputation, my timeline, my story idea, all of it goes on that altar. I will sacrifice anything on that altar to become a great writer. I will continue to work on my craft and become as good as I possibly can and I'll sacrifice anything. I'll submit myself to public humiliation. I will put my timeline on hold until I'm good enough. I will turn my autonomy over to somebody else that I trust because it will get me to where I want to be. So as you pursue your quest to become a great writer, be willing to put anything on that altar. 
sacrifice your ego, sacrifice what you thought it was going to look like, sacrifice the fact that you're not as good as you thought you were because it is worth it. Because when you get to the point where you can actually write the way you've always dreamed of writing, it is well worth it. And when you get that call from your editor saying you've now written something truly great, let me tell you, all of the pain, all of the sacrifice will be worth it. Now, my goal is to help you reach your goal of becoming a great writer, which is why I run this channel and keep putting out videos. And I've got a great next video for you, which is how to learn how to write. So that should be on your screen right now, or it's down in the description right at the top. So click that and watch that next and continue your journey to becoming the writer that you want to be.